Hey guys, I'm here and I am experimenting with making a sand casting material, like similar to Petrobond or Delft clay. But this is significantly different and I wanted to make a video about it because I think it's very interesting and I was kind of hoping for some feedback from the community to see if anyone had any suggestions. But first let me tell you why I'm doing this. There's a lot of times where I have a 3D part that I need to cast in metal. And there's basically three options. You can use a method like this, which is sand casting, delft clay, whatever. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, you take a mold like this. It's a, it's a, it's a clay-like sand material that you would pack in one half of this, put your part, the impression of your part, take the part out. Well, then you would fill this part and you sandwich them together. Then you take your part out and there's a void left over and you would pour the metal into here, into the void. That's the first option. Um, you could do lost PLA casting or the gold standard, which is lost wax casting, which produces the best finish and it's obviously the, the, the best option. But it, it's expensive to get all the equipment and it's very time consuming. You need a burnout oven and so it's just not practical if you're not a professional doing this professionally. So I've been doing a lot of sand casting because of that. Um, Lost PLA is terrible, the finish is absolutely garbage, and it's basically made for FDM printers, which are, in my opinion, horrible. I like to use resin printers, and you can't do that with resin printers, so that leaves me with, um, with sand casting. problem with sand casting that I have, I love the concept of it. I love that I could take a part, stick it in here, make an impression, and cast very quickly. The problem I have is the finish. Um, because the material is made from sand primarily, it leaves a very bad finish on your part that takes a very long time to, to, to sand out and polish out and any time I save by using sand casting is completely lost by having to put in a ton of time and labor to get the parts looking presentable. So I've always wanted to create a, a method that's very similar to Delft Clay that produces a much better finish. So that's what I'm doing here. I mean, sand casting has remained unchanged for 2,000 years. We've been doing sand casting for 2,000 years and the recipes that we're using today are identical. And I think we have such better material sciences now and much better you know, options that I don't understand why we don't have a better material. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So with regular sand casting material, it is a material that looks like, like this. It looks like sand until you compress it and it, it'll hold its shape. It's very fragile. You can't really manipulate it that much. You know, it just holds together pretty much just enough for you to get an impression of a relatively simple part. I sort of wanted to, to fix that. So with regular sand casting material, the grain size is about 150 mesh. Um, the higher the mesh number, the smaller the grain size. That's how it works. So that was the first thing I wanted to, to address. Instead of using 150 mesh, I wanted to use something smaller. I wanted to use a smaller grain size. So I sourced sand, um, the same ingredient in regular um, Delft clay, which is silica sand. But instead of 150 mesh, I bought 400 mesh. So it's almost 400 times smaller in grain size. The next material I sourced was, was clay. Again, the same ingredient in regular sand casting, but in, in what I sourced here is a clay powder. It's like a micronized clay powder. Again, almost 400 mesh. Um, another ingredient, the third ingredient is this. It is graphite powder. The, the product I made is actually primarily graphite powder. Um, this too is 400 mesh, so it's um, it's no longer even sand. This is this is powder. All of these ingredients are a very fine micronized powder. So I felt that would solve the texturing issue from the sand. The next ingredient is the binder. Um, most sand casts use either oil or water as a binder. I didn't like either of those. I felt um, either of those give off a lot of steam when hot metal hits it, especially very hot metals like silver or brass or copper. So I wanted something that wouldn't give off as much steam, but would, but would act as a binder to hold this material together. So what I landed on was silicone. Silicone is already used in, 
in metal casting actually, some of you guys might know, you can cast low temperature alloys in silicone up to 800 degrees. So that allows you to cast up to zinc in silicone molds with no problem. But they tell you that you can't cast anything hotter than 800 degrees in silicone. That's not true. I've actually cast up to 1700 degrees in silicone. I've cast silver and it comes out just fine. The reason why they tell you that is because anything above 800 degrees will destroy your mold and silicone is very expensive. So you don't want to make a big mold out of silicone only to get one pour out of it and you can never use that silicone again because it's already been cured. Silicone acts very funny when you heat it past 800 degrees it doesn't light on fire or melt it just turns to ash but it takes a few seconds and the reason why I'm able to cast silver into silicone is because silver and, and all very hot metals solidify very quickly when they when you pour them so when you pour into a sil silver into a silicone mold it cures before the silicone is damaged but you only get one pour that's it your mold is completely ash and it you could so it's not practical but for, for this purpose, silicone is totally fine because with all sand casting, the, the tiny part of the mold that touches your part is sacrificed anyway. You, you discard that in all forms of, um, of sand casting. And because this mix is primarily uh, silica, um, clay, and um, graphite, you're, you're using very little silicone anyway, so you're not, it's not going to be an expensive process. This material is completely reusable. But what I think is the most exciting part about this material, let me show you, is the material itself. Because I'm using silicone, this material no longer acts like regular sand casting material. It, it has become, because it has a much stronger plasticizer in it, um, it has become more like Play-Doh or, or polymer clay. That's how this, this material behaves. L let me show you. So, like regular, this would be like regular sand casting material. When you compress it, you can imprint an image, but only so far. This material, um, you, it, it, it holds the smallest detail permanently. Well, not permanently, you can rub it out, but you see that? You can carve in, here, let me see. You can carve in the smallest details. And they don't, they don't go away because it's very hard. You can rub it and it's not fragile like, like casting sand is. So you would use this material exactly like, um, you know, regular sand casting material. You would take your part, you would imprint it in there, create it, it'll hold it, and then you can, I'm doing this with one hand, so it's very difficult. Take your part, and now you have an impression left there. See, the problem with this, with this material that I think, it, that I predict might be a problem, is because of the silicone in here, it's no longer porous. So, any air is going to have difficulty leaving this material. But I don't think that's a problem because because of the nature of the material, because it's so pliable. Look at that, you can you can carve very here, let me see if I can get get closer in here. You can carve the smallest doing this with one hand, I'm sorry. You see you can carve the smallest little little details in here. So you can carve little air channels to to uh, let the air escape. So I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. Um, what else about this material? Oh, another thing I like about this material is that... Here, let me put the camera down for a second. Another thing I like about this material is when you cast... when you put an impression in this material let me see if I put this in the light so you can see it. It gets shiny. That's how good the finish is. This is not sand anymore, guys. This is, this is some next level shit. And there is no reason why this should not produce a part with an incredible finish. There's no 
oils or waters in this material to off-gas. There are no large sand grains. The, you can put strategic channels in here for letting the air out. The material is over 95% um, you know, graphite, silica, all materials that can withstand the highest amount of heats. This, sil this silicone, by the way, is not cured. This is liquid, very thinned, very, very thinned liquid silicone that um, presumably is only going to cure where, it, where the hot metal touches it. So essentially what you do is after your casting, you would then go in and you would dig out the part that was, that was destroyed, which is a very tiny portion of it, and the rest of the mold, see, look how clay-like this material is. It's basically not sand at all anymore, and it holds impressions beautifully, and it's not fragile anymore, and you can cast apart and then go in and carve details if you want. You can, it's just, it's just incredible. I think this material is going to be great. The problem is I don't have any silver in the house. I have, I have um, zinc and I have pewter, but that wouldn't prove anything. I mean, th those, we know those can be cast in, um, in silicon already. Anyway, I am going to buy some silver and post a video next week showing the process of me casting into this. From, from my experience, from what I know about these materials, that there's absolutely no reason why this wouldn't work a thousand times better. And um, hopefully it works for you too, because I, I think that this is, a, this is, this is a, a much better alternative to, um, to sand casting. I mean, it's, uh, it's really only practical for smaller things. I mean, I don't think it would be practical for filling anything larger than this mold, which is four and a half by four and a half, because you know, silicone is um, difficult to mix into the material, so you need a, sm a fairly small container for mixing it. I don't know, I don't know how you'd scale this. I mean, actually, you could probably scale it. You could just thin out the silicone with um, naphtha really well, and then distribute it evenly through the material. Anyway, I'm going to buy some silver this week, and I'm going to start um, experimenting with it. And um, if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts on what you think about this, let me know. I'll post the updates in a week or so. If you're interested in, if, if you're interested in this, uh, follow me, and um, maybe I, you guys want to contribute to this project because I think this really um, contributes some ideas, I mean, to this project because I really think that this is a, a game changer when it comes to three, or I hope it's going to be a game changer when it comes to uh, making metal parts from uh, 3D prints. All right, guys, take care.